town called Vacaville. Um, but it's about a hundred thousand people, a little more than that. Um, it's in Northern California. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. California prices are pretty similar to here. Um, <laughs> probably similar how many agents there are there too. Do you feel like there's a, a ton of agents? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Out here, like everyone, um, everyone you talk to, like either they're, they're not an agent themselves or like have their license at least. Then, right. uh, one of their coworkers or something. Yeah. A lot of people work two or three jobs just to make yeah. ends meet. It's kind of crazy. I know. That's what I was thinking because I'm a nurse. So I was thinking, well, I might have to do like part time nursing, part time real estate. I'm not sure, but we'll see how I do. <laughs> yeah. Doing nursing, uh, that's a great route to you know. I um, actually just had a, uh, there's a referral that uh, another agent gave to me. And uh, she was, the referral uh, lead was um, moving, she wants to move to Hawaii from uh, somewhere on the East Coast. And uh, yeah, she's a, a CRNA and so is her husband. Okay. Um, that's a, a great uh, profession to be in. And, you know, everyone you work with, let them make sure they know that you're a licensed agent so you can help them out too. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. All right, what else? What other questions you guys got? You got a question, Guadalupe? No. Night, night. Has anyone, has anyone not um, started their pre-licensing. I haven't. Uh, just, I, I, I haven't paid for the class yet either. Keaton. Yeah. Okay. So what's holding you back from getting this? Uh, I'm just waiting until after the holidays is over, and then I'm gonna um, pay for the class and everything. Okay. It's like a budget reason or something. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Hey Zor, let me let me chime in quick. Uh, this is my last week of uh, Skillbridge, and uh, it's finished last week. My Florida real estate. Oh, course. nice. Uh, just waiting on the state of Florida. I guess they're partying still because they can't give me an authoriz authorization <laughs> to, to schedule my test. So just waiting on that, and uh, hopefully by the first week of January I'll be done with that. So awesome. Done um, with the test, you mean? Yeah, with the state test. Yes. Yep. Awesome. Uh, thank you for chiming in on that because that's that's a great point right there. Um, a lot of people don't realize that like certain states take longer than others. Um, I was pretty fortunate out here in Hawaii because the, at the time that I um, signed up to take my test, the processing of of because so there's waiting processes after you complete your pre-licensing, and, and each state varies on how long that process is. And then after you pass your test, you put your whole package together with the certificate saying you passed the test, the certificate saying you completed the pre-licensing, um, the little application, the the fee, all that stuff. And some states require uh, fingerprints, all that. So you put that whole package together, walk it down to the county, or depending on the state you live in, you might be able to uh, mail it in or submit it online. Um, but you submit that, and then there's another waiting process when they city workers have to uh, decide when they're going to complete your application and approve you as an agent. And so people don't realize about those wait times. And so people are like, oh, I'll just wait until, uh, you know, a, a week out from separating from the military. And then I'll just start doing that. Um, but so in my case, um, knocked out my, my uh, pre-licensing a month before uh, starting the program took the test a couple of weeks before starting the program, um, submitted my application and it was a 40 day wait. Um, and so I know that math, math doesn't work out, but basically the first week of, of the program, I was licensed. Um, but if I would have, if I was waiting until the program started, I would have been, you know, a month, maybe two months into the program, um, before actually being able to, to work as a realtor. Um, and then that's another rabbit hole where, um, 
it takes on average, you know, six to eight months to uh, get your first transaction. And so if you, for that eight months right there, and then you add on two or three months, some places it takes longer to do the pre-licensing, you're looking at, you know, maybe a year before on average that you're going to close your first transaction. But if you're proactive about it, get your pre-licensing knocked out as soon as possible, uh, and then submit that application to take the test as soon as possible, and then submit your actual application to get licensed, um, you'll be on a good track and then you'll maintain that momentum for, uh, you know, just being hungry to succeed. Hey, hey uh, me again. Uh, so a little advice on, on the real estate course, because um, by the time you're done with your last module, the first module just went out of your brain. It's gone. Um, I highly advise the practice this, just do them over and over and over and over again till you get like a 90% and that's going to set you up for success. Which uh, practice test did you sign up for, Junior? So I did a, a CE shop, the CE shop. Um, so it, it the package I bought has uh, has the actual course, the 63-hour Florida course, and exam prep edge, plus fear of influence, and plus starting your real estate business. So it's, it's a whole package. Um, I got more from the exam prep edge with the practice test and all that because it It'll show you where you're wrong. It explains it. So you kind of, obviously we learn from our mistakes, right? Better than from the good things. Um, so it kind of helps in, in, in uh, you um, recapturing that data that you started on, on, on that first model, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard good things about C Shop. Um, I did the self-paced program through a, like a local uh, pre-licensing course. Um, which is basically where they just send you the books and you just got to teach yourself. Um, but for the practice tests, um, the, that program offered some, but the uh, main practice test that I did that helped me the most was the PSI. And so they have this, just like a very broad uh, 500 question test bank. Uh, it's $50 for a 90 day subscription, unlimited number of tests you can take on there. Um, and I highly recommend signing up for that if you don't have a good um, practice test that you're, that's provided to you. <laughs> pre-licensing course. Prep agent is pretty good for the actual exam. Mm -hmm. Prep agent? Mm -hmm. What's that? Is, um, you gonna... I'm in California, so it gives okay. you the whole ebook um, for like a crash course of what's going to be in the exam. And then it has practice exams as well and quizzes and vocabulary and all that. So I find that one to be very useful. Nice. Thank you. Of course. Yeah, and there's lots of, um, if there's one, not one included in your uh, pre-licensing course, um, there's free ones out there too. Um, you do run the risk of, you know, not being very good, but, you know, you can surf the web, go on YouTube. There's a bunch of practice questions on there from uh, different people that make the videos. And um, yeah, there's, there's other options out there if you're working on a budget. Were you going to say something, Don? Um, so if you're still active, um, uh, what's that called? Tuition assistance will pay for it if you haven't already got a previous license. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you can just uh, visit your education center and, and sign up for the tuition assistance and the, they got you covered. Justin Smith said, I applied for my exam as soon as I started my pre-licensing course. Definitely recommend doing it ASAP. What state was that in, Justin? Florida, yeah. Um, I think Florida is probably the longest I've heard. Uh, I think it takes like two or three months sometimes to get your your thumbs up to take the exam. And then there there becomes the question of whether or not you're gonna pass on the first try. So, you know, if, you're, if you've been getting after it and you're ready to knock it out, cool. But if not, and you don't pass it and then you got to sign up to take it again then you can save yourself a lot of headache if you, you just if you knock out your pre-licensing and everything asap can you sign up for the test state test before you finish the pre-licensed courses i think that varies by state uh, i think in florida i think you can sign up no you have to you have to submit your no i'm so i'm in florida um so you have to submit so you have to do your prints before your fingerprints before you you submit your application and you have to finish your exam, like your, your pre-licensed pre course, 
you have to submit a certificate with the exam uh with the okay. application hmm. i just signed up for the exam in california and they ask you for your fingerprints and then the aita number which is like so the fingerprints or whatever and then they also ask you for like the course number so for every like single one of the pre-licensing courses that you took the three of them you have to enter that too and then you pay for it and then you have to go through this long process because like I did it last week and I keep checking the website and they just tell me like as of December 19 they're processing applications from December 2nd and they haven't like updated it so I'm just like yeah Jeez. yeah so yeah, I, kind of, I would have done it earlier like like you know so don't need any more that's mine it takes forever yep you're one um, I think some states, they like you, you show them your DD-214 or some kind of proof that you're separating and they'll let you jump to the front of the line. Um, or like if you if you happen to already be out, um, they'll let you jump to the front of the line if you're a veteran. Anybody hear about that for, different, for their state? I haven't heard about that, but uh, they, they also waive the fee in some states, most states. Mm. Dave Pimentel, where are you at in the process? Hey, what's happening? If you guys hear somebody snoring, I swear to God, it's not me. It's my dog. I got 140. Oh, okay. nice. <laughs> no, I got my, I'm just doing, like, really just focus on the pre license stuff. Just going hard on that. Um, I do have a question, though. With the, the new rules coming out, I got, like, two buddies that are, um, I kind of convinced them to, to, to join up over here, um, and they're mm -hmm. retiring. And I just gave him that that update that um what's his name put out on that general chat. Yep. One of the questions I had was um is, is there a way that like they can take a, I guess not not pay the fifteen hundred upfront but just do like a payment like five hundred dollars a paycheck or something like this is what he was asking. Um, I could yeah we could talk to David about that. I'm I'm sure they're they're understanding so I'm sure they could do something like that. Um, but there's also the option of you saw the the update. So if they get their license before they start, yeah, I see that. pay the fee at all. Yeah, that's pretty much what I told both of them. I said, man, just just knock out your license now because they're not getting out till um April and May, I think was the two or even June. So it was like next year. Mm -hmm. Um and I was telling them about this program and they were like, Hell yeah, I want to jump on, but so yeah. But that's it, man. All I'm doing is just studying. Really, I haven't even really gotten the EXP world. I've been in there a couple of times, but my computer sucks. I need I need a new computer. The the wife and kid, um, a Rumba for Christmas, and I'm thinking of exchanging that for for a new yeah. laptop, old ass Apple. That just I don't know. Just I guess the software is not is not right for it. Yeah, it might be a good swap. I heard heard Rumbas have a cameras on them and take pictures of you. When yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, all bad. <laughs> yeah. Um. We said you're in pre-licensing. Um, let me think of something. What do you say? You're, oh, oh, the uh, so the the uh, practice tests for if if someone chooses to sign up for PSI, um, I recommend because it's 90 days. I recommend signing up for it, like basically as soon as you start your uh, pre-licensing, because uh -huh. I waited until I was done with my pre-licensing to start doing those practice tests, and I I finished my I passed my test and then I had like 80 days left in my subscription. Um, but I wish I would have taken the practice tests like from day one, even though most of the questions, like you don't know what they're even talking about with the language, um, but you can, you know, break out your online dictionary and Google what each words mean in the uh, the question that they're asking. So that could be one way to, to help you learn. Okay, sure, I'll do that. Yeah, I'm planning on, um, right now I'm planning on February, mid to late February taking my test. Um, my subscription runs out, I think, in April. Oh, you, you signed up for PSI? No, I did a freaking Colibri Express something, something. I don't know. It was the online stuff. Okay. Um, but it only went on. I think it, it it's over. It's game over for me in April. So, But I'm planning on doing it in February so I can, you know, take advantage of whatever you guys have to offer as far as, like, people having their licenses or pre-licenses and stuff. All right. Yeah, sounds good. All right. What are the questions? Oh, well, I have a friend who is already licensed, like here in California. I don't know if it applies to anybody here, but whatever. So he told me to do prep agent and it has like a lot of, 
it has like a sorry I have a dog she's loud but um it's a lot of like practice exams and it just it goes by like category so there's like one category for like vocab and then just like all this different stuff and there's like multiple of them so he was just like telling me like oh just keep taking them until like you're like in the 80s and 90s and then like schedule your exam for whichever like day when you feel comfortable and stuff so I started that and honestly it's like really helpful and you can also like um keep in contact with other like tutors or whatever and stuff like that so it's really nice and then it was a little expensive because they only give you an option for a week a month or a year and I was like so then I did the year but then I literally just googled um like a discount code and it it was right there so I got like 30 percent off so I don't know just recommending that yeah that made me think of another point important thing to keep in mind um majority of the stuff that you encounter on the exam and in like pre-licensing um chances are you're not going to ever see that stuff again maybe like five ten years down the road like you'll see maybe five or six of those things but uh, for the most part like it's just like kind of like the uh um basic training like you just got to do it like a lot of the stuff you learn in basic training you don't you never apply again in the when you're actually active duty um but once you make it past that you're you're in and then that's when the real learning occurs. Um, so keep that in mind, like, yes, pay attention in your pre-licensing courses, uh, but don't feel like you need to memorize absolutely everything. Um, do a th- thorough amount of studying, but the, the bigger thing is that's going to help you is um, just getting those practice tests, doing them over and over again. Like Carrie was saying, just until the until you're, you have like every question memorized, but the important thing once you get to, you feel like you're really confident and like you've memorized all of them, go back through and think, do you, like, even though you know what the answer is, cause you've seen the question 30 times, go back through and ask yourself, do I really understand what this question is asking me when they say uh, leasehold, do I understand what leasehold actually means? And then that's when you break out the dictionary and look up those words. All right. What other questions? So Justin Smith said on the topic, oh, go ahead, is that Dave? Yeah, um, I was just wondering, I take my exam tomorrow and I was wondering if you had any pointers for day of, like one that I've heard before, for example, is record yourself, uh, like naming off topics that you can't for the life of you remember and listen to that while you're driving to your exam. So I didn't know if you had any pointers like that that maybe you had done day of that you thought helped. Um, I would say day of, get some good sleep, um, which which you know right now is probably what you're going to know in the in the exam. Uh, I hadn't heard of that recording yourself thing. Maybe it's helpful. I don't know. Um, but yeah, good sleep, good breakfast. Make sure you understand the rules of the test. Um, for my exam, I did it online in my uh, kitchen, and I knew it was going to be a pain in the butt with the uh, the test proctor. And so with the test proctor, I had to lift up my laptop and it took like 30 minutes. I had to like show them every square inch of my um, kitchen. And and then I found out during the test that I'm not allowed to have water, coffee, like any, any beverage, really anything on the table with me, except for a blank sheet of paper and a one, one pen and uh, no bathroom breaks. And so I had already drank a good amount of water. Um, and yeah, so I have a really small bladder. And so the 30 minutes into the test, I had, I was like, my eyes were turning yellow and uh, I, had to, I had to just push through the test and just get it done. But thankfully I passed the first time, but understand the rules. Like a lot of people, like if you have to drive to a certain facility, make sure you know where that facility is, make sure you know where parking is at that facility. Um, know that, know if there's, if it costs, Thirty dollars or not, and then you're going to want to like park somewhere else or try to find parking somewhere else. All those little things that can maybe make you late, and then also the rules of the actual facility when you get in there. Um, like, what can you be wearing? Like, if they tell you uh, you can or can't wear a jacket, um, if it's a really cold room, you might want to have a jacket with you in case it gets cold, so you don't want to be shivering trying to take the test. Uh, stuff like that. Just uh, physical preparations, mostly. I would say to to make sure you're not physically uncomfortable so that your your mind can operate on all cylinders. Okay, thank you. And 
I actually took my CE shop course final in my kitchen, the same way that you mentioned. And I'm purposefully taking my exam in person because of that. It took me almost two and a half hours just to get in after my scheduled time. And then there were three or four times throughout the exam that the proctor had me stand up and show all four corners of the desk and different things like that that are just little annoyances, you know? Yeah. (laughs) They actually, they made me put my phone on or like put, it made me show them that I was putting my phone behind me on a, on the table behind me. And I did that and actually put it on top of a jar of treats for my dog. And somebody was calling me during, during the test. And so the vibration made it fall off that jar and the jar tipped over, shattered on the ground. My dog was still walking around. So I was like, can you hold on for a second? I just need to put my dog away. So it doesn't cut his feet on glass. Um, so yeah, keep those things in mind. All those little annoying no. aspects that you don't think about. Yeah, for sure. All right. So Justin Smith said on the topic of pre-licensing courses, I strongly recommend not going with Real Estate Express, Colbury Real Estate. I made the mistake of doing so, and it was a very inaccurate course filled with typos and misinformation. Has anyone else experienced a similar situation with Colby Colbury Real Estate and Real Estate Express? <clears throat> Or the opposite. That one. There was a few typos in there. Mm. So. Okay. Yeah, I don't know about the misinformation, but yeah, there's definitely some typos. typos but I don't know about the misinformation. Yeah. Maybe you can get Facebook in there to fact check them. Uh, Guadalupe. I do have one question. Um, how long have you been a real estate agent for? A uh, year and a half. So I was licensed in July of 2021. Um, uh, separated from the Marine Corps. Uh, New Year's Eve, so I'm coming up on one year of being a civilian, and uh, yeah, so about a year and a half. And um, the reason I ask that, because I'm kind of curious about your experience in the industry, like in the current 2023 that's coming up, where do you see the markets going? Like, do you see any opportunities with a certain niche, like maybe short sales, I don't know, like anything in particular? I, I would say like us being veterans, like network that we have, um, coming from the military, every one of my clients has been military. Um, and for for a while, when I was you know first getting into the the business, I was thinking like, how do I get to luxury listings as fast as possible? And then I was because like, who who doesn't want to sell a thirty million dollar house and make you know, I mean, two and a half million commission? Um, <clears throat> but once I started looking at the data for all those luxury listings. And because uh, I went to like this this coaching uh, seminar, um, the ninja selling thing, and the guy that was teaching it, he's he like, specializes in luxury. And I was looking at his stats, and that's, that's what made me realize it um, of like how, how many listings he had, how many, how long on, they were on the market, um, how many expired, how many were withdrawn, all that stuff. And so with luxury listings, like you see a lot of people, cause, like those the people that are that own those properties. Um, if it's people or if it's like entities like LLCs or whatever, um, they put a lot more thought into like how long they want to like the more, more like high, high, uh, high demand or, or uh, what's it called high maintenance is the word I'm looking for. And so you're dealing with like really high maintenance people that expect the world out of you for, for what they're paying you. And uh, if you, even if you're, you're giving your absolute best to them, uh, they might decide like, Oh, you're, I can find better. I'm going to expire. Or I'm going to withdraw my listing with you and let it expire. Um, and so I saw those stats and I was like, man, this, he has he, like out of these 50 listings that he's had, um, like 10 actually sold. Like, it, I don't know if I really want to deal with that kind of headache with all these people and like ordering there's, you around and all that. So there's a lot of power to high volume anyways. So I don't know what type of um, homes you, you, you deal with, but um, I have seen that many of the successful real estate agents that I've seen within like my community, they do a lot of like high volume transactions. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so that's, that's the point that I was getting at. Um, like instead of trying to jump to those luxury listings, high dollar amounts, but they take a year to sell um, military, like people are on a timeline to buy, um, you know, the language of military of PCSing and um, all that stuff. Like you, you are a military relocation professional, but 
you got to pay 200 bucks or $300, whatever it is to get the actual certification for it. Uh, but you know, all the ins and outs cause you've experienced it yourself. Um, but your, your network is people that, you know, are PCSing uh, once every couple of years. So um, I would definitely recommend focusing on that niche, regardless of what the market happens. Cause honestly, I think it's unpredictable. I can I could probably um, predict that it's not going to go back to, you know, 2% uh, interest rates like we saw um, a year ago. Pretty good chance that's not going to happen. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, but uh, regardless of what happens, I would say if you just focus on uh, the niche of military, uh, you'll be in a good place because, you know, their military people will always need a place to live. Um, if you educate them properly on, the benefits of buying versus renting, um, you'll easily convert a lead to a, a client. So yeah, keep that in mind. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Dave. So how do you go about getting the military relocation specialist certification that you were referring to? Would that be through NAR or EXP or what? Yeah, I signed up for it through, uh, NAR and, uh, you have to, they give you a discount um, if you're, I forget what the discount was for, but if you, so you've set up through, I think it's because I signed up through NAR, they give you some kind of discount, but I think there's other ways to sign up for it um, that might be more affordable. Like your, your uh, local board of realtors might be hosting it or something. Mm -hmm. Like it might be certified to teach the class. And so if you go through that, you can do the in-person version and it'll probably be a little bit faster, like a day or two instead of, a week of clicking through slides and uh yeah it might be cheaper too because one person is giving a class to like 30 people instead of you just paying for the online course right okay that makes sense and the other question i had was do you know if there's any opportunity to utilize your gi bill for different certifications like that within real estate i don't know if that's possible but um Given what I know about the GI Bill, I would recommend against doing that because um, if you use your GI Bill for that, then I don't know if they would give you the housing allowance, which you rate if you use it to go to a school. And like, so San Francisco has the highest BAH in the country. And if you happen to go to a school there, you'll get the $4,900 a month for housing allowance um, or whatever state you're in. Here in Hawaii, it's like 3200 3, I know it's uh, not, not as high in other states but um, definitely a lot more than paying the 60 bucks for some of the pre-license or for some of the uh, uh, continuing education classes that you're talking about, like MRP and PSA uh, pricing special specialist, something. Um, so definitely I, I, I would recommend not using that even if you could. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Hey, on that. Uh, so my kids are using my GI bill. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to have minimum of 12 credits to get paid the full BAH rate. So you like, like, like Zor was saying, you'd be wasting that GI bill benefit for that month. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I didn't know that though. I appreciate it. Any other questions? I just had a question about, um, being on a team uh where you, i i think you're we're on a team when you first started is that right yes i still am oh you still are okay so that's what i was thinking would be the best to do is to be on a team for at least a year to learn you know everything you need to before you try to just be on your own um when you're on a team uh do you have like an office you go to every day or does it depend on the team I'm just wondering like if it's just an online team, you know? Mm. I know it's, it's in person people. Um, do you, is, is an office something that you want to have? Like you want to um, drive to an office and work there? Um, it doesn't matter to me. I was just curious, um, you know, and then I was curious, can you pick a team? Like, so I live in Vacaville, but I thought about ha having a team in Savannah or not Savannah, sorry, <laughs> thinking about my son's place in Sacramento, um, because I know there's some really good real estate agents up there. Um, I don't know, though. 
I didn't know if, you know, you are always in an office or if it just depended. Um, so to answer the, the office question first, um, there's these companies like Regis, I, I think uh, EXP has a contract with them and they also are working on just having their own. Um, so Regis is like a shared working space, um, like WeWork. There's a, a few other companies out there. I'm sure it's a growing trend, um, but they're starting these success. Have you guys heard of Success Magazine or anything like that? Yep. Um, so now they're, having, they're, they're starting these success workspaces throughout the country, uh, I think to kind of replace the use of Regis. And mm -hmm. uh, if you want an office space, you can pay to have one there. And it's just it's a pretty reasonable fee because, um, like, depending if you just want to show up from time to time to use the Wi-Fi and printers, whatever, um, you can do that. Or you can um, just have like a monthly membership to go whenever you want or an actual permanent office there. Um, so, th so there's that. Like, if you want an office away from your home, you can do that. Um, I would say most EXP agents work from home because it's, you know, it's cloud based. Like, we don't uh, need to sit at the. EXP office to to pull in leads. Like there's lots of other ways to pull in leads than sitting in a, a building. Um, and then your question about teams. So yes, I I was on. Um, we, we were, our name was the Vasquez team, which uh, Tosh and David paired me up with um, when I first started. Gosh. And uh, so I highly recommend joining a team, but finding a good team. Um, there are good and bad teams out there, but uh, yeah, it was a great experience. Learned. Learned a ton. Um, ended up changing our team name because the team owner kind of retired from the business. But yeah, great, great learning experience. And as far as getting paired up with the team, as soon as you get licensed, um, we can help you with getting paired up with the team. But you can also do some research on your own if you like. If you're out driving, you see uh, signs for an EXP team that seems like they're every other house they're they're listing it. Um, uh, feel free to do research on that team. Look them up on Facebook. See what kind of stuff they're doing, and if they if they're if you think they're a good match, then you know you can tr try to reach out to them and see if they'd be willing to take you on. Okay. Could you um, kind of just run through a typical day, like when you're with a team? Because I'm I'm not sure. I know you know everyone is going to share the profits and things like that, right? But I'm not sure like if one person is going to focus on this and this person will focus on that and then they all come together or how that how that works so there's different uh layouts for the profit what, what i think you're referring to like how, how like the pay structure mm -hmm. um so my team if i pulled in a lead it's like if one of my friends contacted me and said they wanted to buy a house mm -hmm. um i would get 100 percent of that commission um but if i if i was constantly calling my my team lead asking them questions like hey what do i do for this part, that what do I do for if the inspection comes back with a bunch of stuff, like how do I, um, what do you recommend I do to convince my client that it's still a decent house to buy, that it's, yeah, it needs some repairs, or how do I negotiate with the um, sellers to get a, whatever, get a, if I kept on asking, if I were to um, be constantly reaching out to my team lead for those questions, then he's kind of devoting his, work time to helping out that file. And then, so I'd give them you know, 10 or 20% of the commission. Um, but okay. some teams, but if it was a team lead, um, which like pulled in from our uh, Facebook page, oh. then even if he handed that lead directly to me and I handled it hundred percent on my own, then 30% goes to the, the team pay structure. Um, oh. But every team is different on, on what's available. Um, as far as like my uh, daily routine, um, just like my morning, like workout, wake up, meditate, all that kind of stuff for the first couple hours and then, um, prospecting and depending on where you're at, you're at like prospecting might be good in the morning because, you know, people are available for whatever reason, mm -hmm. uh, while they're at work or whatever they're doing. Um, or it might be later in the afternoon when people are getting off work or even on the weekends. Um, but prospecting should be a, a good chunk of your uh, daily time. Uh, that's like your your money making time that you should protect mm -hmm. and then after that uh, working on your business following up with people you've already established contact with reaching out to your family and friends you know making sure that they know that you're in the business or just making conversation with them 
um, staying top of mind is what the, the common phrase you'll hear for that. Um, and then whatever works best for you, as far as like checking emails, try to uh, time box that somewhere in there um, so that you're responsive, but not living on your email. Okay. Because it can take up your old day. All right, thank you. Got another question, Guadalupe? Um, just give a little um, context about, you said uh, co-working spaces. So funny enough, I was doing all my studying and like working from like home, like with personal things I do. Um, I finally got my co-working space and Dave actually came, came by the other day and we we're just here. It's very, how do I say it, optimal to be like very proficient and effective. And it really just makes you more productive. So if anyone is even considering getting a co-working space, I definitely recommend doing a free trial with WeWork or any of these co-working spaces that there are out there and see if it's for you. Um, I definitely say that it's a game changer for me. So whenever I do go ahead and be on a team, whether they have an office or not, I plan to have my own office just accessible 24 seven. So yeah. Yeah, thank you for sharing. For That's a great point. A lot of times I go to, to the local cafe just down the street, it's walking distance for me um, because Kind of like when you think back to when you're in high school or college, whatever, um, trying to do homework, like with a bunch of distractions going on, mm -hmm. going to the library and there's other people around you that are quietly working. And so you just kind of get in the zone and start making things happen. All right. Um, that about wraps up for today's meeting. If, unless there's any other questions, I'll stick around for a few minutes until everyone's gone, but, uh, yeah, thank you for coming today and have a wonderful week. Have a happy new year. Thank, thank you. Thank you as well. Thank you. <laughs> Town called Vacaville. Um, but it's it's about 100,000 people, a little more than that. Um, it's in Northern California. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. California prices are pretty similar to here. Um, <laughs> probably similar in how many agents there are there, too. Do you feel like there's a, a ton of agents? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, out here, like, everyone um, everyone you talk to, like, either they're, if they're not an agent themselves or, like, have their license, at least, then... Okay. Uh, one of their coworkers or something. Yeah. A lot of people work two or three jobs just to make yeah. ends meet. It's kind of crazy. I know. That's yeah. what I was thinking because I'm a nurse. So I was thinking, well, I might have to do like part-time nursing, part-time real estate. I'm not sure, but we'll see how I do. <laughs> yeah. Doing nursing, uh, that's a great route to you know. I um, actually just had a, uh, there's a referral that uh, another agent gave to me. And uh, she was, the referral uh, lead was um, moving, she wants to move to Hawaii from uh, somewhere on the East Coast. And uh, yeah, she's a, a CRNA, and so is her husband. Okay. Um, that's a, a great um, profession to be in. And, you know, everyone you work with, let them make sure they know that you're a licensed agent so you can help them out too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. All right, what else? What other questions you guys got? You got a question, Guadalupe? No. Night, night. Has anyone, has anyone not? Um, started their pre-licensing? I haven't uh, just. I haven't paid for the class yet either. Keaton? Yeah. Okay. So what's holding you back from getting this? Uh, I'm started? just waiting until after the holidays is over and then I'm going to um, pay for the class and everything. Okay. It's like a budget reason or something? Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Hey Zor, let me let me chime in quick. Uh, this is my last week uh, of Skill Bridge, and uh, it's finished last week. My Florida real estate. Oh, nice. Yes. Uh, just waiting on the state of Florida. I guess they're partying still because they can't give me an authorization authorization to 
to schedule my test. So just waiting on that. And uh, hopefully by the first week of January, I'll be done with that. So Awesome. Done um, with the test, you mean? Yeah, with the state test, yes. Yep. Awesome. Uh, thank you for chiming in on that because that's, that's a great point right there. Um, a lot of people don't realize that like certain states take longer than others. Um, I was pretty fortunate out here in Hawaii because that at the time that I um, signed up to take my test, the processing of, of cause it's, so there's waiting processes after you complete your pre-licensing and, and each state varies on how long that process is. And then after you pass your test, you put your whole package together with the certificate saying you passed the test, the certificate saying you completed the pre-licensing, a um, little application, the the fee, all that stuff. And some states require uh, fingerprints, all that. So you put that whole package together, walk it down to the county, or depending on the state you live in, you might be able to uh, mail it in or submit it online. Um, but you submit that, and then there's another waiting process when they city workers have to uh, decide when they're going to complete your application and approve you as an agent. And so people don't realize about those wait times. And so people are like, oh, I'll just wait until, uh, you know, a, a week out from separating from the military. And then I'll just start doing that. Um, but so in my case, um, knocked out my, my uh, pre-licensing a month before uh, starting the program, took the test a couple of weeks before starting the program. Um, submitted my application and it was a 40 day wait. Um, and so I know that math, math doesn't really work out, but basically the first week of, of the program, I was licensed. Um, but if I would have, if I was waiting until the program started, I would have been, you know, a month, maybe two months into the program um, before actually being able to, to work as a realtor. Um, and then that's another rabbit hole where um, it takes, on average, you know, six to eight months to uh, get your first transaction. And so if you, for that eight months right there, and then you add on two or three months, some places it takes longer to do the pre-licensing, you're looking at, you know, maybe a year before on average that you're going to close your first transaction. But if you're proactive about it, get your pre-licensing knocked out as soon as possible, uh, and then submit that application to take the test as soon as possible, and then submit your actual application to get licensed, um, you'll be on a good track and then you'll maintain that momentum for, uh, you know, just being hungry to succeed. Hey, hey uh, me again. Uh, so a little advice on, on the real estate course, because um, by the time you're done with your last module, the first module just went out of your brain. It's gone. Um, I highly advise to practice this, just do them over and over and over and over again until you get like a 90% and that's going to set you up for success. Which uh, practice test did you sign up for, Junior? So I did a, a CE shop, the CE shop. Um, so it it the package I bought has a, has the actual course, the sixty three hour Florida course, and exam prep edge, plus fear of influence, and plus starting your real estate business. So it's it's a whole package. Um, I got more from the exam prep edge with the practice test and all that because it. It'll show you where you're wrong. It explains it. So you kind of, obviously we learn from our mistakes, right? Better than from the good things. Um, so it kind of helps in, in, in uh, you, 